Hey guys, what's up? It's Shelby and welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be another Mystery Monday video. This video is going to be um, a pretty short one, but I want, I've never done a Jane Doe or a John Doe on my channel, so I thought I would do one for you guys. Um, this one actually was quite a while ago, but it is still a like unidentified person and also known as a Jane Doe. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right into this video. Today we're going to be talking about the Tempe Jane Doe. So April 27th of 2002, a young woman was found on the side of the road close to the Arizona State Campus area. This was in Tempe, Arizona. So like I said, she was unidentified. They took her in right away and um, put her into an autopsy and all that kind of stuff. She was said to have died within 24 hours of them finding her. Next to her body, like in this area, they actually found a compound, a compact disc that had clear fingerprints on it. So they ran this compact disc through the database right away and found out that it belonged to a woman in Phoenix, Arizona. Like I said, they took her into an autopsy right away and they found out that this um, woman, um, when her remains were found, she was between 15 and 17 years old. She had black hair and brown eyes. She was said to have been Hispanic or Native American. She was found wearing a red top and blue jeans and she had one heel, like one wedged heel on, but the other one was never recovered. So one thing that the police really used to try to um, figure out who she was is she had a very prominent scar on the back of her left hand. It was in the shape of an L and it started at her pinky and went down to her wrist. Of course, they searched through um, all the missing women in this area and around, you know, surrounding areas, but none of them really matched the description of this female and nobody really called in to, to claim her either. The police initially thought that her cause of death was foul play just because of the way she was found and everything like that, but when the autopsy came back, her cause of death was actually of a cocaine um, overdose. Again, the police don't really know if it was given to her or if she took it um, willingly. The police did everything that they could. They put her on social medias and stuff like that. They searched all the databases for missing um teenagers and stuff like that and they also were calling schools because like i said um once they figured out she was about 15 to 17 I means she obviously was going to school so they were calling schools all around to see if like a student you know hadn't showed up for a while or something like that but nobody really said that they were missing students and even if they were they never checked out to be this female like I said, they found the fingerprints of the woman um, that owned the compact disc and they brought her in for questioning and her boyfriend as well. She said she had no idea who this was, she'd never seen her, she um, completely denied like ever knowing who she was, but her boyfriend said that he saw her the night before um, hitchhiking. So he said on April 26th, he saw her hitchhiking when he stopped to ask her if she needed a ride and she agreed and said that she was trying to get to Tempe to buy concert tickets from somebody there. During this drive from um, about Phoenix to Tempe, um, they started talking and he said she's mostly smoke mostly spoke in Spanish and she had mentioned that um, she had, was having a hard time with her family and they were getting into fights and stuff because they found out that she was using recreational drugs. During this drive, um, he ended up actually picking somebody else up who was a known a drug dealer um, in this area. Um, and once they started getting into Tempe and stuff like that, she kind of switched and was like, oh, I don't really know if I want to do this, like buy these tickets and stuff like that. And she openly asked him to buy her drugs and he agreed. So they used the money that she had and I think some of his money to buy her cocaine from this drug dealer that they had in this car. He said that he watched her, um, you know, ingest these drugs and then pretty quickly later she started acting really really odd and both him and the guy he picked up said that she was probably having a reaction to the cocaine they took her to this car park where her body was found he did say you know and it was close to this university so it was kind of in this right area that he had mentioned that he drove her to and he said he um 
removed her from the car and then the two of them left and he took the um, drug dealer to a gas station and told him that he needed to get out of the car and that he needed to call for help and then he immediately left before making sure that he called the ambulance for um, help and as you can guess he didn't call anybody he just left and then early that next morning on the 27th like i said her body or her remains were found so he was actually never prosecuted because there was a lot of questions that were unanswered about this that they didn't know who she was first of all she, they didn't know her age they didn't know really if when he removed her from this car if she was already dead or if she was still alive um, and they cannot confirm that of this drug dealer either that was allegedly in this car. But his story eventually did check out and they let him go and so her death is still just a technically a cocaine overdose but she has her body has never been claimed yet. I think his story is a little bit fishy to like he went from, he picked her up and then all of a sudden they had a drug dealer in their car and she didn't want to buy these tickets and then she, then he bought cocaine from the drug dealer who let, just happened to have cocaine with him and it just seems very, very odd and then she had a weird reaction to it and then dropped her off and just left. Like, I don't know why he didn't call 911 or something like that when he dropped her off and said, hey, I saw somebody, you know, or whatever, like... I just feel like his story is really, really, really odd. I feel like it does, I mean, it matches up with the story, so he obviously did see her, but I don't understand a lot of it. Like I said, the whole drug dealer thing, it just seems so coincidental that it's like, doesn't even seem like it's true. But let me know what you guys think down below. Um, That is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you guys want to see next down below. Don't forget to follow my social medias. They're all linked down below as well. I post on Mondays and Thursdays at 1.30 Central Time, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!